spinning. Lights on. And there goes the VFD. Have a little bit of wiring still to do. I'm waiting for cabling to come in for these. These are the actual motor connections that will be made out here. These are the sensors. You see that I got them all wired up. I have two that I'm trying to figure out where to plug them in yet. Um, one will be a uh, zeroing sensor, and the other one's like a, another ax axis uh, sensor. Um, these are all my uh, drivers, so they'll be wired to these connections here. So those, that's what these are for here. Got my 48 volt which is like outputs 36 volts uh, power supply and then I've got a um, 5 volt <laughs> and I just found out to get this connected properly to this board and, and be able to control it I have to get a 12 volt power supply so I'm going to find some room and stick it right in here so I'll probably slide this over just a little bit still leave some room for that fan but slide it over and just make a little bit of room for a 12 volt to the little ones like like gonna go from large medium to small and that will feed the back side of this board this, these last two pins right here one and two those two will be the uh, ground and uh, 12 volt and that enables the relays to fu uh, function and control this so I pre-wired all this so you'll see that kind of runs around and comes into the back side of this a little, little junky uh, also um, you might notice that there are these exposed wires. Well, this is all shielded wiring. And so there's a couple that aren't connected yet, like this one I either can trim off. I'm waiting for that 12 volt power supply because I'll probably ground it at the 12 volt power supply. So I'll probably ground it here and then snip off that end um, just so it's not dangling near all the electrical. And then uh, those are all grounded. Those are all signal cables. Uh, those are all grounded to each other and they all run into the 5 volt because this board is what's providing 5 volts. So um, I try to always return to the ground that it's provided by. So that way you have like a common uh, area to go ground. Um, so I'll kind of run through this real quick. Power comes in here, runs all the way along this bottom corner here up to the switch. And that's what on off switch here. Then power runs back out of the switch to these distribution blocks and then it gets distributed to the power supplies. So each one has its own feed of power and then also the VFD gets its own power. And then when the 12 volt comes, there's one more slot that I can use out of each of those. I mean, I could double up to if I wanted to. Um, so then each of these power supplies provide different voltage. So this is a 48, power, 48 volt power supply. It provides enough power for the motors to run. So these these uh, are the drivers for the motors. And then this is the spindle, which has its own power supply built in. And then this five volt power supply powers my breakout board and the ESS uh, smooth stepper uh, by warp nine. Uh, you can see the power right there goes in there. And then the power goes in those two, that pin and that black wire right there. Um, and then you might notice that I have, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, then going out of these boards is you got all your signal wires that direct the drivers with do, and then signals out of there go to the motors. And then on this end, those are inputs. So these will be like uh, little switches, little switches that will trigger a signal back into this board and tell things to stop. And that's where this e-stop is going to come in. So this is the e-stop. If I had my board plugged in uh, to a computer, there would be a red light here, and then there will, all these lights would be lit up. That's called a, uh, oh man, it's, I forget what it's called. But essentially, there's a signal that's being sent by the computer on this pin right here, this last pin, and it picks up a, on a chip on here and it detects a high frequency uh, signal. And if it detects that, it knows the computer's in control of it. So if, uh, if it's not in control, um, 
it, uh, it shuts down any control, any possibility of the motors running. So these, all these signals would shut down and it wouldn't control the drivers at all. So um, that's why those aren't lit up right now. But the same deal goes here. So there's, to provide power to all these pins, there's actually a jump right here. So that first uh, screw hole is uh, power and then it's actually jumped to activate all these pins. You can divert, and this is where um, you can put in a, a switch. So if you'll notice, that is run, it goes kind of underneath and comes around, and then comes up here to this switch. And that's where this would come in. So I'll, you're not gonna see anything happen here because there's no computer hooked up to it. But if I were to press that, it would shut off all the lights that are, it would look in its state right now. And you'll notice that one light came on. So what it's doing is that's sending five volts through this switch, which is normally closed, which means that it's uh, uh, on essentially. And when you press it, it turns it off. And what that does is it breaks the connection so it doesn't jump those pins anymore. So it does a physical power disconnect, but it also triggers the board and says, hey, there's no more, uh, or there's been an emergency stop. And it'll also tell then the computer that it is shut down. So that's my e-stop. And then obviously I've got, like if I have a catastrophic thing, I can just go clunk. And this just has a slight delay of shutting off. So yeah, um, built this today, uh, been 12 or 14 hours. Um, I, I decided to permanently affix my spindle cable because it's such a beefy cable which I think I've gone overkill on it, but, um, well, I know I have, because I think it only can run at 8.5 amps, so it's not really a high amperage thing. I read somewhere that you should do a high, like a really good cable for that. This is a shielded cable. Everything in here is shielded, except for the actual power cables coming in. Um, everything coming, uh, uh, like signal-wise, is shielded. So uh, these are shielded, and they're, ground so that way the shielding is actually going to work this is the only cable i don't have shielding on or not shielding i have uh, not connected to a ground yet you'll notice this is the beefy uh spindle cable that has uh the ground or i'm sorry that has the uh, if i can just talk it's two o'clock in the morning guys i'm sorry <laughs> so that is actually um the grounding cable and then the shielding is wrapped around inside it uh, and you'll notice that that kind of wraps around and goes to the back. I decided instead of doing like a breakout on the side here like these with the spindle cable, it was such a beefy cable that I figured that this would just be the best way to do it, strain relief. Mostly because I, if I came in with that cable, I would have to go and connect it here and then go again. And I just don't think those connectors would hold up. So I came in with a, a beefy um, cord relief and then just kind of wrapped it around. Hopefully with everything shielded and properly grounded, it will help with any EMF, EMF, EM, oh goodness, electrical interference, let's just say that. <laughs> so yeah, this is my, uh, my box here. So I got some fans on the side. Control, if you want to turn it up down, I'm just going to leave it on full blast. The one thing I did, and you can't really see it here, is I prefer, I just put a bunch of holes in the back. Uh, hoping that that will be enough to keep like some positive pressure. Obviously, there's going to be some air leaks everywhere else, but I'm hoping positive pressure will keep dust out. And then I've got filters on the front here that I can clean out, you know, just do in the sink. So uh, my plan for the top is to do uh, some just uh, clear plastic, but... I really didn't, I didn't measure before I did this, so I might have to go re return this and get a new sheet that's bigger. Um, this is 18 by 24, and my case is 19 by 19. Um, I don't know why I came up with this. It's mostly just because of the, the baseboard, the biggest piece. <laughs> I had about 19 inches on one dimension, and then like 19 and a quarter on another, so I just made it square. Um, if I can can't think of anything else to kind of talk about on the box. This just took me all day to build out. I've been working on just testing and tuning. Just, I was just, I just used the baseboard and screwed everything down for a while, but now I finally built the box and 
Just got to get some soldering done once I get my cables in, in the mail. And um, I guess I can show you what I have over here. Um, oh, here, let me show you this. This is this came in today. It was supposed to come in like Wednesday, so I'm really excited. I got my three ball screws here. So I'll put those together tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll actually have like a moving machine tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. But this is the, the CNC um, down here is where the case or the the controller case is going to be. So it'll be right there. The switch will be here. Uh, emergency cutoff. And then actually, I didn't show you this. This right here is actually a Ethernet port for the computer because that's what the smooth stepper uh, connects through. So you just jump it into here and that way I can just plug it in externally and, it's, you know, dust cap will be good. Um, you know, got the idea from a couple guys on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's go over here real quick. I'll briefly go over this because it's becoming a 10 minute long video. But uh, I got slide uh, linear slide rails on the side here. Uh, they're not real, real beefy. I, I didn't realize the size of them until I got them. But actually, with the amount of bolts that are in there, super sturdy. Um, the design is just uh, a conglomerate of stuff I saw on YouTube and in pictures online. Um, this is a torsion style box. So you got a grid pattern inside that will keep it nice and square and uh, sturdy. Um, thing is just, I mean, there's the, the standalone is level and solid. This is, there's no rattling in it. There's no give, um, completely level. I mean, if you even look at the, we're right on the dot there, uh, cross and everything. So everything's level. You know, we got rails on each side. Got a moving gantry up top here. Let's see if I can go wider. Yeah, I can go wider. So moving gantry up top. Oops. Um, style here was to try to get the spindle centered with the rails. So the weight, you know, you have some weight toward the back, but once you add that spindle, it starts leaning forward. I didn't want all that weight going forward. I wanted to try to center it over the rollers. Uh, it also allows me to, I mean, we don't, I'm not gonna have a full table of uh, of uh, use just because of the restrictions of the spindles, but or the linear rails, but it's pretty good. Um, and then I got some up top here. These don't slide nearly as well as the size, but it's pretty, pretty darn, good. Um, what I did here, and you'll notice some holes don't have a screw in it because I actually used, uh, I, I screwed and I used these little, little threaded nuts in each of them. And then I used an M3 screw. Um, and what I found was as I was tweaking these, cause that's why I got to roll pretty good. Now I was tweaking them. Some of them were pulling them out of alignment. So like this screw here, that screw there, I think there's like one more here. Yeah. And then another one there. They were just slightly off just because of, you know, me drilling and me insert doing the inserts, uh, just barely pulled it out of, out of plumb or out of uh, alignment or parallel, I should say. So it was making it real tough to move this along with the amount of bolts and everything in there. I just, I feel comfortable that it's sturdy enough. I mean, it's, that's a overkill in my, in my opinion, I would have done maybe one every other. <laughs> so it's really, it's really sturdy. Uh, I was actually surprised by how strong those rails were. Um, you can see the little uh, bearing blocks down there in between on the rails. Um, oiled them up with just a, actually I used a bicycle non, uh, dry, I used the dry bicycle loop and actually helped a lot on making those slide really well. And that way the dust doesn't stick to them. Um, let's see. Okay, we'll talk about spindle because I think that's all that's left. So, uh, oh, NEMA 23 motors. Um, you know, this is this table is 30 by 30. Uh, all the it was based on like a 24 inch or 600 millimeter um, design. So, all the all the rails and uh, uh, ball screws are 600 millimeters in length, just under 24 inches. So, I have about I probably have realistically like t with the amount of room that you lose here because obviously this isn't going to be full 24 inches probably you get about 18 inches lengthwise and probably about the same going 
left to right because you get a, you lose about three inches here, three inches on the left, so you lose six inches total. So about 18 by 18, I, I could confirm that once I get it up and running, um, of actual cutting space. Um, the table, you know, I'll have some extra rooms. I'm going to put down, um, uh, I have them sitting right there on the table saw in the brown boxes. They're uh, T-slots, and then I have some uh, as my backer board. That way I don't ruin my top on that. I can screw into it, though. So I'll use uh, MDF as my backer board, um, and I'll be able to just do T-slots. I think I, I can get a couple of rows of T-slots going the full length of the uh, table. And that way I can do some hold downs and everything will screw into this, but that way I won't ruin this with the, the thing. So all I'm doing do is put holes in it to hold my, uh, my subsurface down. So anyway, NEMA 23s, uh, the spindle is a 2.2 kilowatt. Um, uh, it's a 110 version. So 110 volt version, water cooled. I haven't figured out the water cooling yet. Well, I kind of have, I just haven't, um, hooked it up yet or filled up the reservoir yet but um i'm gonna get a drag train for back here once i get everything wired in switches will be wired in that's part of the reason why the table's so large 30 by 30 so that way i can mount the motors here and drive the screws and i'm gonna have to layer i think i have it designed in, in uh sketchup but i have to put like a couple blocks to get the motors up high enough so that you can drive the drive screws so we'll we'll see how this goes on tomorrow that's the the task for tomorrow is to get those hooked up. Um, and then once I get hooked up with those, you'll notice I have, have connections here, but I don't have wiring over here. I don't have uh, these hooked up yet. I've already set, I've already got these ready to go uh, with solder and everything. So they're pre-primed and everything. I just have to hook them up. So what I might do is see if I can't run them on this wiring. I have to check the Ambridge. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I was really hoping that wiring would come in, but I've already got connectors on these, so I can't really run motors tomorrow, but we'll see. I mean, oh, this one doesn't, so I can, I can probably do this one. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the uh, task. This video is long enough. Tomorrow's task is ball screws and, uh, maybe getting this thing running. I might just go to the store and get some or electrical. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a uh, day-to-day woodworking, man. Uh, this is what I do on the weekend when I can just uh, do stuff. I've uh, been fortunate that my wife is out for the weekend with the kiddos, and she left me to have a full weekend to myself. And uh, man, for how much time this took, uh, I'm really appreciated that I had the time to do it because I would have been working on this for week after week after week after week with how much time it took, especially with having kiddos around and all that. Just, uh, this would have been a bear and I'm just glad I was able to knock it out and get this out of the way because this is neatly done and I'm happy with it. So, well, except for the one thing I have to put in here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, join me again and here I'll, I'll, uh, let you actually see me. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll try to post some more about this. This is a, a little bit of a passion project and I, I'll have to give you guys a background on how I got into it, but it's not for this video. So, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.